Hey everyone, Percy T here. Thanks for checking out this YouTube channel. Okay, we'd like to welcome JT Poston into the interview room, our 2019 Wyndham Championship winner. JT, if we can get some comments on your first PGA Tour victory. Yeah, it feels unbelievable. I mean, a dream come true. Um, you know, I've always, I've always dreamt that I could, I could win out here, and I felt like I had kind of proved that, um, give myself some chances over the years, but to be able to do it here in North Carolina with a lot of friends and family, and um, I don't think I could have drawn it up any better. And to become the first player since 1974 to play 72 holes and win without a bogey, talk about what that means to you. Yeah, I mean, that's something I was telling some people earlier. I don't know. I probably haven't had that many bogey-free rounds this season, this year, uh, much less back-to-back. -back. And to be able to do uh, four in a row is, is, is pretty special. And to be able to uh, finish it off with 62 on Sunday is pretty awesome. And before uh, questions, you really set, set yourself up well now for a run in the uh, FedEx Cup playoffs. If we can get some thoughts on your goals over the next few weeks. Yeah, I mean, one of the goals at the start of the year was, was, to, was to win and to, to be in Atlanta at the Tour Championship. So um, I think I was told this gets me to 27 on the FedEx Cup yeah. list. So that's a great position to be in going into the playoffs. And um, we'll, we'll celebrate this victory and, and have some fun tonight. But um, we'll, have our, we'll have our game face ready to go the next couple of weeks. All right, awesome. Let's start with uh, Ron and Cam right here. When you imagined winning your first tournament, how close did the reality come to matching or exceeding what you imagined? Not even close. Not even close. I mean, the only the only similarity from today than, than what I dreamed of was having a four-footer to, to win. Um, but having all the support and hearing all the, the crowds and um, the, you know my friends and family cheer me on on every shot, after every shot, um, was something that I I had never dreamed of and, and was pretty special. All right, Cam and then JD. Uh, JT, congratulations. What did it, I'm right here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, what did it do for you? I, I know your grandpa was here and, and your coach was here and your mom and you had a lot of people here. Uh, what did that do for you? Have, have you had, have you played in front of that many friends and family before? Uh, only a few times when I've, that when I've played here and when I've played in the Wells Fargo and Charlotte. Those are kind of the two closest closest tournaments to home um, so they're they're usually able to make it to those events but usually they don't play this good whenever they whenever they get here so um, yeah it was it was pretty special to have everybody here especially my grandfather he was the one that gave me built me my first golf club when I was three years old and um, I have so many memories at the golf course with him following him to the range playing playing golf with him growing up and um, definitely would not be here without without him, without his, without his guidance. And then just to follow up real quickly, what did it do for you to see Keith win? Uh, obviously you're pretty familiar with his game and, and, and who he is, and do, do, do you sort of think if he can do it, I can do it too? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, we lived together in Sea Island, Georgia, and um, we're really good friends. And for him to, to be there behind 18 green when he knocked that putt in to win at the Honda, um, I was so happy for him, but I remember stepping back and, and thinking, okay, I know I can beat him. I've done it before in Sea Island. <laughs> Nothing against Keith, but I, can, I know I can hang with him. So if he can win on the PJ Tour on a tough test like, like PJ National, then, yeah, that, that gave me a lot of confidence um, and a lot of self-belief going forward that I can win out here too. All right, John. JT, how did you not let the moment get so big? You seemed to do a good job of putting your head down, but you said you heard the crowd, too. How did you kind of just keep that poised? You know, I, I wish I had an answer for it. I, I just, for some reason, all week I felt calm. I never, um, there were definitely some nerves and some pressure shots. Um, 
throughout the week and especially today, but I tried to tell myself that I had been in these types and of situations and felt these kinds of nerves in college. Obviously this meant a lot more than maybe a college tournament, but I can remember being in college and that felt like a pretty big deal um, playing in those tournaments and it definitely meant a lot. Um, and so I just kind of drew off of those experiences and the, you know, the positive results from, from college and just tried to keep doing what I was doing. I was hitting it good and giving myself a lot of looks and the putter was really solid, so. All right, first row and then over to Shane. JT, as John said, you kind of kept your head down. You were pretty stoic after birdie, birdie eight, 15 and even after 18. When did you allow yourself to believe that you were going to win this tournament? Yeah, I mean, right up until that, until Den's uh, birdie putt on 18 went by the hole. I mean, I, it was, it was kind of funny. We we're sitting there in the scoring tent and I'm getting a lot of congratulations and really proud of you and this and that. And I'm sitting there thinking, he can still make birdie and this tournament's not over. Mm -hmm. And so I think I was, I felt like I was the only one in the room that was not as, not as uh, positive as everybody else just because I wanted to, I just knew anything could happen. I knew it wasn't 100% over with. And um, I'd say that's, that's kind of when it hit was, was after his putt went by the hole. All right, over here, Shane. Uh, JT, I was curious about the detail of your grandfather having built you uh, your first club and if you could maybe go into detail on that and your relationship with him and how golf plays a part in that relationship. Yeah, so the club was an old persimmon head five wood that he, I don't know how he did it, what he did exactly, but I know he took a lot of the weight out because I was just a little three-year-old kid and, you know, uh, I needed something that was light. but. He gave me this five wood, and um, I think we still have it somewhere at the house as like a memento. But um, yeah, I mean, I can remember as a kid falling to the range and taking that five wood and just hitting balls for hours and just loving every minute of it. Um, and yeah, I mean, our relationship, a lot of it has revolved around golf. I mean, he was a big influence on um, on me growing up as a kid, even as far as, you know, how to act on a golf course when I was a kid and like, you know, little things like that, um, that I learned from him and just, just from watching him and how he, how he carried himself, uh, when I was a kid. And it's, it's so special to have him here. Um, he hasn't been able to go to as many tournaments lately. Um, he's had some health issues and for him to to be here is, is, you know, that's something that I will never, never forget. Uh, Charles Cunningham, he goes by Doc. So I call him Pa Doc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Two Southern Conference Championships, is that, or Southern, uh, so SoCon Championships? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned before that, that those felt like a big deal to you. What, what, were, what were those like? What, what was the, that whole experience like winning those two? Um, yeah, those were, at the time, those were big deals. I mean, any, any, any win in college was huge for me. I was trying to, one of my biggest goals I remember in college was to be an All-American and being at a, being at a smaller school, I needed to play that much better, um, because our strength of schedule wasn't as strong. Um, but yeah, I remember getting to, uh, some conference championships and especially my senior year, I was in a playoff, um, with another guy from East Tennessee State and, um, I remember hitting it in there, hitting a five iron in there to about 20 feet or so, and he made par, and I had this 20 footer to win, and I knocked it in, and and that kind of that's one of the first times I that's still a putt that I, you know, think back on even to this day when any time I have a putt that means a lot or kind of a pressure type putt, and then two weeks later I was in a regional and had the same thing, had to make a probably a 25 footer to force a playoff to get to nationals, which I had never done. And, you know, that all I'm thinking about is the putt that I made in that conference championship and knocked that one in, got to the playoff, won the playoff, went to NCAAs. And so it's, it's things like that are stuff that I, I'll probably never forget. And I still draw off of those, those putts and those moments, um, even out here on tour. All right, let's go to Ed. So not a lot of kids go to Western and end up on the PGA Tour. Some of us went there to catch trout. But mm -hmm. um, when did you know, and when did that become your goal or your dream, and did that happen at Tully? Uh It was always a dream, I would say, uh, since before I was in college, probably since I was a young kid. I mean, I can remember watching Tiger win the Masters in 97. 
I was only probably four or five years old at the time, but I can remember watching it and thinking to myself, I want to be that guy. That looks really cool. And so I'd say even from a young age, it was a, it was a, um, a goal of mine, a dream of mine to be out here. But I'd say it didn't really settle in or hit home that I could – I legitimately had a chance to, to be out here on tour until probably my junior year, senior year in college when I started having a lot of success. All right, John? Have you thought at all about, you know, the exemption? Because I know you were, you know, trying to get there and everything and the masters and all that stuff. Have you thought about that yet? No, that's, yeah, that's unbelievable. I mean, the exemption, obviously, job security is a good thing. Um, but Augusta, that's another thing that's, that's a dream. That's that's something I've always dreamt of playing in, in that tournament, and to to be in, to know I'm in that field uh, in April will be, you know, that'll be an awesome week. It'll be a, a week I'll never forget, no matter what happens. That's 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 a dream. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I, I don't know. We might have to, we're gonna, we're gonna have to work on that. I don't know what the ticket situation is there, but we'll figure it out. All right, Cameron. Uh, how good of a, a golfer was Doc? And can you tell us just a little bit about like what he did for a living and who he is? He is a great golfer. Um, he's 85 years old, and he shoots his age probably every time he tees it up. Um, I think he stopped keeping track a couple years ago because he just did. He, well, he used to keep track, and I want to say the last time I asked him, and he told me it was in the 600s, the number of times he shot his age. And I think the first time he did it, I want to say he shot 64 or 5 when he was. 66 so he can he can play and um i remember growing up he just hit it kind of kind of same similar game to, to myself not nothing flashy off the tee or um but he kept it in front of him and his short game was unbelievable and um that was kind of how i learned how to play golf was was watching him and at a at a competitive level learning from him Did he play amateur tournaments he um he played in some senior AM stuff. I know he played in uh, maybe one senior British AM, and I want to say maybe a U.S. senior AM. I can't remember where he played them, but I know he, he has played some, some tournaments here and there and over the years, and um, he's just – he loves golf. He's competitive, just like most of us are, and, and yeah, he's great. All right, take a few more over here. So let's talk about tonight. How, how do you begin to celebrate your first tour victory? I don't know. This is I've never done this before, so we're going to have to figure it out. Um, I'm sure there will be a couple Coors Lights, a couple beers um, to be had tonight. But uh, I'm just looking forward to celebrating it with all the friends and family that are here. Um, you know, if it was another week where maybe not so many people would have gotten here, it would still be a great celebration, but to have them here – um, to be a part of it will be, it'll be a good time. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm pretty excited. All right, JD? You mentioned yesterday Lake, Lake Hickory Country Club is a, a Donald Ross. Did, does that help you when you grow up on a course like that and, and on a course like this? I'm actually not sure if it is a Donald Ross uh, design, but it is very similar to this type of golf course where you have to, there aren't as many drivers. Uh, you have to kind of learn where to hit it, where to miss it. Um, a lot of the greens are back to front, and so you kind of learn to keep it below the hole. And yeah, I mean, it was a course that I played thousands of times as a kid, and just knew exactly where to hit it. And it's, I mean, playing a golf course this week that's similar to that, there is a little bit of a comfort level um, doing that. JT, I'm assuming we'll see you in Maui as well at the Century <laughs> Tournament of Champions yeah, in January. Yeah, that's another one. That's That'll be awesome. I can't wait. All right. Well, first of all, best of luck uh, in the FedEx Cup playoffs, and congratulations once again on winning the Wyndham Championship. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. it. Congratulations, JT Poston, on your perfect and flawless tournament win at the 2019 PGA Windham Championship. Have you or anyone you know ever played a bogey-free game? Let me know in the comment section below. And please click on the thumbs up icon if you liked this video. Subscribing also helps. And I'll see you in the next Versity video.